In my XCOM 2 review, I talked about the radio silence regarding XCOM 3 and how unusual that is. The most successful turn-based tactics game of the 21st century should have received a third entry in the series by now, surely. After listening to Danny O'Dwyer's interview with former XCOM team lead Jake Solomon, I feel a lot less in the dark. First up, I would encourage you to subscribe to No Clips Dear Dwyery podcast so you can listen to the interview in full. And while you're at it, consider supporting No Clip. They create some of the best video game documentaries on the net. But basically, the full interview sheds light on why we haven't heard anything about XCOM 3 yet. And Marvel's Midnight Suns seems to be the key reason. I mean, I, I'll, I'll tell you, as I've always, I'm happy to always just say exactly what it was. Like, I, so I was working on XCOM 3 at the time, an idea for XCOM 3 at the time. It was truly random. Marvel came to us and they said, hey, would you like to make a Marvel game? And I was a big time Marvel comics guy. Very, very, very hardcore. I was afraid because I was like, I don't, I've never worked with IP I remember I met with um, uh, Garth DeAngelis, my EP, and Greg Furch, who was my art director, and I talked about it with them. I was like, I don't know about this. I really don't know about this. We were just about to start up X3, and I was like, I don't know about this. And then, like, that weekend, like, I think I even knew then, I was like, this is, like, I, once it got into my head, I was like, I have no choice. I must make this Marvel game. Like, all I did was start designing a Marvel game. Like, the minute they said that, I was like, I'm designing it in my head. I'll never walk this back. And then I was like, all right, forget it. Like by Monday, I was like, forget it. We're doing it. We got to do Marvel. Yeah. The IP alone had the potential to reach a much wider audience than even Enemy Unknown and War of the Chosen. The market for those games, it's a small slice of the gaming pie. So anything that increases visibility and broadens the appeal, that's good. Not just for the developers, bottom line but for us as fans more people with an interest in the genre means more games developed of that type for us to play i did suspect that midnight suns had something to do with the lack of xcom 3 but it's difficult to know for sure how a particular game studio works multiple teams working on different games it's not unusual at all but it seems that at firaxis there was this one team led by solomon working on xcom and they had to make a choice Either we continue work on 3 or we switch focus entirely to Midnight Suns. The reception to Midnight Suns, however, was disappointing and Danny O'Dwyer points out that the realities of game development can be harsh. Game development is brutal and when a project you've been working on for years doesn't hit a desired watermark, it can lead to, well, layoffs. And in May of 2023, Axios reported that around 30 people at Fear Axis had been made redundant. A rep from their publisher 2K told Stephen Totillo the cuts were due to a sharpening of focus, enhancements of efficiencies, and an alignment of our talent against our highest priorities. What a mouthful. Uh, to me, that sounds like a studio that's going to focus on games they think will sell. Sid Meier's Civilization franchise is obviously one of those, and you could imagine that XCOM is another. Even people at the top of their game with colossally successful games under their belt are subject to market forces. Yet it really does seem like a mystery why Midnight Suns didn't fare better. I can only speak for myself, but the reason I didn't play Midnight Suns upon release was that superheroes and turn-based tactics, they just didn't seem like the right fit for me. When I think of Wolverine, I think of fast action combat. Then again, Marvel Snap is a card game and that's massive, so that can't be the reason. The idea of spending a lot of time in dialogue with your party of heroes building relationships didn't really appeal to me. But look at the popularity of The Sims and the myriad dating games on Steam, so that should not be something that stopped people playing. Why didn't the Marvel fans jump on board? Surely becoming best friends with Blade, that's a comic book fan's wet dream. Not to mention creating your own custom hero, something you can do. I don't think you can do that in any other Marvel game. Yet the interest just didn't seem to be there widely with that larger audience. The game got good review scores, has got good review scores now, but I don't think it's hugely popular. Maybe it's as simple as the fact that superheroes aren't the cup of tea of most turn-based tactics fans and tactics aren't the cup of tea of most superhero fans. Then again, as Solomon points out in the interview, there's a healthy dose of luck involved in any success. Perhaps Midnight Suns was simply 
unlucky. COVID-19 meant the global economy was in flux. People didn't know what might befall them next. So perhaps they were being cautious with their money. Although the massive growth of the games industry during the pandemic seems to contradict that. The game released three years after Avengers Endgame, generally considered to be the peak of Marvel's popularity, after which we've seen a decline in interest. So maybe the timing was off. Whatever the case, for our purposes as XCOM fans looking for an explanation as to where XCOM 3 might be, I think we have the clearest picture yet. And the new team at Firaxis will surely have their own ideas about how to proceed, meaning they've likely started from the beginning again after Mr. Solomon left. I suppose the main takeaway is that XCOM 3 is still in development at Firaxis, with different people working on it, but at least at the same company. And that in itself seems like a miracle these days when people are being laid off left, right and centre. Companies are being merged and disbanded in the wake of disappointing game releases. Jake Solomon and his team will be a hard act to follow, but there are many talented developers out there just waiting for a chance to show what they can do. And we just have to hope that they will stay the course, not get distracted when DC comes knocking. Imagine being able to romance Batman. That would bring in the crowds, wouldn't it? Thanks for listening, guys. And as I say, don't just listen to my interpretation of the conversation. Go and listen to the actual interview itself on the No Clip podcast channel. I've put a link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. I've been Nap Yet, and I'll see you next time.